All right, here we are ready to share my little slide presentation I put together for you guys. And um, I'm really excited about this because I've been doing this presentation or variations of it for many years. And I have really, really long ones that are like hours long and I have uh, short ones. And this is, I was trying to make this my shortest one, but we'll see what happens. So um, I am recording it. Obviously it'll be available later. I'll have it up on, on YouTube probably sometime next week. So um, we will have it available. So this is about becoming fascia informed and uh, it would help if I spelled that right. Anyway, presentation goals. We, What I wanted to get through tonight was to just provide a scientific and a contemporary understanding of the myofascial system and myofascial release. Because what I find is that, you know, even with years of having fascia in my life, it as time went on I, and continues to go on, I just get a deeper and deeper understanding of it. And I feel like we can never learn enough, especially in this field where, you know, most of medicine isn't even really fully recognizing what we, what part of the community and the world knows about fascia, we can always learn more. And the more that we work with our own bodies and the more that I work with, with people as a therapist, just the the more enriched I become in understanding this structure. So you'll you'll know more as we go. We have. I also want to share easy to use techniques for self care to improve the fascial health and prevent injuries. But we're very very slightly going to touch on that. So this isn't a self care, you know presentation of let's try this and let's try that together. That's what we can do down, down the road, but also offering uh, practical steps to integrate the self treatment methods and routines to promote improved function and improved comfort and really try to get across to, to you how important it is to be consistent. And I feel like understanding the structure better really helps us get to that point. It's like when, when you understand why you need to be doing something, it makes it easier to do it, right? So that's kind of the way that that I look at it. And I, I love this slide. So most people have seen this this picture, you know, where it's depending on what type, how you look at it. I asked my daughter, what did she see? She saw a, a young, beautiful woman, right? So depending on how you look at it, you might see a, a young woman. And depending on how you look at it, you might see an older woman with a, a cap over her head. You see how that is? And so this is what I think is so important, it's shifting the perspective of what we were taught as practitioners and, and even as just humans in general as having bodies. And we hear about bones and muscles and organs and, and we have an idea about what that is, um, but to be open to shifting that perspective to something totally different because that's really what I feel the fascial system is. So I'm just asking you to keep an open mind because this really is in some ways, even though it's very simple in some ways, it's very complex in other ways, but the most difficult thing I think is we're asking, or I'm asking people to look at the body in a completely different way. So, so just try to be open as we, were, we are talking about what is fascia in general. Okay, so most importantly, it is a major player in every movement you make in every injury you've ever had. So this is this is profound because it, it really is major. It it holds everything. So, you know, I'm often hearing people comment about a muscle muscles, especially, you know, well, my quads are tight or my my pecs are this or that. Well, any muscle that we have named in our system is basically muscle fibers in an area of fascia and the fascia is what controls all of it. So the sooner we begin to understand that, the better because then we're able to treat that. So what I have here is an x-ray of a pelvis, okay? So you have those little winged areas there and I, I, my little pointer is gone for some reason, so I can't actually point on the screen. But those little winged areas is where we would like put our hands on our hips, okay? So really the hip joint is this little, is the ball and socket area there. 
But, you know, we talk about putting our hands on our hips. Most people we're talking about the top of the pelvis, right? And if you look at, at the little ball and socket joint there, you'll see that there's a little, there's a space between the round ball, right? And then here's the acetabulum where that, that hip comes together and there's a space there. So I want to point this out now because this is really important to me as a therapist and as I'm pulling and pressing and working with the body, this is kind of what I see and what I feel um, through my hands, okay? So when we, when, we have, when we don't have that space, that's not a good thing, right? That space is there for a reason, for movement, for synovial fluid, for protection of the joint and the cartilage and all of that sort of thing. So just, I'm gonna bring this up again later, but I may refer back to it. And this is what I want you to see in your mind. We have spaces in our joints, which is important. So just a little bit about my story, just briefly mentioning here that the picture on the far side, on the far left is, is me running a marathon. That was my second one many, many, many years ago. So in my 20s, I was a big runner. I just loved it. It just really gave me a great feeling of stress relief and so many things. But I did too much and I knew nothing about fascia. And I wanted to spend all my time doing the hard stuff. I didn't do hardly any stretching at all. And, you know, I, I then ended up going into triathlon, which is the next set of pictures that, that you see, because it got to where I couldn't run long distances anymore because my body was getting too tight. So those spaces in my joints, they were closing and I didn't know what it was. I felt, you know, different pains and aches going on in my body, but all I knew was I couldn't run long distances. I had to break up what I was doing into different activities, which is why triathlon worked for me for a while. And then after that, I, I was in PT school and that was when I was introduced to John Barnes myofascial release and just watching this video of him talking about it, I knew it was important. And I, I had a feeling that that was part of what was going on in my own body. So I had my own injuries from running, but I also had headaches a lot. And then I, I had uh, on the last day of uh, courses when we are in PT school, then we go off to internships. I was fortunate enough in my very first internship to start on day one with a therapist who had just finished the John Barnes Myofascial Release One course. Like what would be that fortune? You know, it was just perfect because I knew I wanted to do this work. So she taught me everything she knew from that course. And I had some amazing successes during that time. And so the, the headaches then um, eventually turned into migraines. So, you know, I was, I was doing this work. I had learned this work through my internship. I hadn't been to a Barnes course yet, but my body just kept getting tighter and tighter because I hadn't been getting treated. So there were no therapists nearby. Um, I went to get courses that helped me some, but going to a course is not the same as getting treatment for yourself. And I realized I really needed to develop my self-treatment. And, and so really it's so important to me to teach people how to work on their own body. Body. And, you know, it's not exactly the same, of course, as having a, a skilled therapist hands on you, but there are a lot of things that you can do to help yourself and also to either keep, keep your body from going back to that tissue memory or to progress a little bit between sessions. So that's kind of how I got here. Um, fascia has been talked about for many, many years, even though it's not talked about a whole lot in certain circles now, but Way back when in 1800s, um, Dr. Andrew Taylor still, he was the first, um, he was the founder of osteopathic medicines. So you may be familiar with MDs and then there are DOs. So that the Dr. Still was kind of like the founder of that, that whole um, osteopathic medicine movement. And, and he talked about fascia all the time. In fact, John Barnes talks about when he started to discover this, in his own body, he went to the uh, medical libraries and pulled up a lot of writings from him. And, and he says here, we see in the fascia, the framework of life, the dwelling place in which the soul sojourns. And, and for some reason, I can't see part of my own um, screen here, but <laughs> I believe that's what it says. By its action, we live and by its failure, we die. And the soul of man seems to dwell in the fascia of the body. So these, you know, he was alluding to this a long time ago, but until recently, fascia was still dismissed as just mere packing material and discarded as having minimal functions, despite all of these other insights that they had. And, and I can attest to this in, in PT school, when we were in cadaver lab, 
dissecting the brachial plexus, which is an area in the armpit here where it's very intricate how the nerves and the blood vessels all come together. And it took us four hours to dissect four little inches of this area. And we had to be very careful because it's very, very strong. We were using a scalpel and we couldn't cut the wrong thing. It was, it was exhausting, frankly. And so I remember thinking how important, you know, Oh, this must be. And then we get into lecture the next day and, and our professor's like, well, once you got all that connective tissue off of there, now we can talk about the nerves. And I thought, well, that was it. And we really did just kind of dismiss that, that whole thing. However, I'm going to switch this off a little bit to a topic called tensegrity, which is actually an architectural term started by Buckminster Fuller back in the 60s and we're using this to explain the structure of the fascia so bear with me here um tension and integrity that's those are the two words coming together for for this term um and these two men fuller and snelson um really kind of built these models and it, it was snelson who said his forces are internally locked the mechanical forces of compression and tension or push and pull are invisible or pure energy in the same way that magnetic or electrical fields are invisible. So what's so cool about this in this model over here on the side, you can see they're using struts and cables. So cables would be the thin thing. So think of like rubber bands kind of a thing. Like this is this little model that I have here, which you probably can't see me very much because I'm a small picture right now, but I can I can show you when we're when we're um, when I take my screen share off. And it's, it's a push and pull system. So these, these harder struts, which are like these dowel rods in this little model that I have versus the cables, which are more movable. And so here we have this tensegrity structures in architecture and in our world around us, right? Different structures that they have made to be very adaptable yet very strong. I like to think of it as scaffolding. So when I explain this to patients who are new to this whole idea, I use the word scaffolding because kind of everybody knows what that means. You know, we've seen structures like this as they're building buildings, but it's a very limited model because we are not like scaffolding, although it kind of does look like this. What I like to show is this book here by Dr. Uh, Gamberto. He's a French hand surgeon, and he started videoing live tissue magnified 25 times to show this structure. And this is where we're kind of bringing it into this tensegrity bio, meaning in the body. So there's body tensegrity, and that's that's what they're likening the, the structure to. So this book goes into great detail to show these structures and, and how the body moves, this biotensegrity moves in this push-pull fashion to, to hold our cells together. All the cells, all the structures, everything, everywhere, continuous from head to toe. So, you know, it's it's it sounds like kind of an, a simple thing to think of, but really, if 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 you let yourself think about it, it's really quite vast. And I love these pictures here because you can see blown up, and then also off to the right here where you you can see a little capillary, and then all of a sudden it stops. So when the there's compression happening in the biotensegrity structure, it can literally compress on a blood vessel and stop that flow. It can compress on a nerve and change what that nerve is sensing. And it can compress on an organ or a muscle. It goes on and on, causing all kinds of pain and problems actually. So in the biotensegrity structure in the body, we have bones and we have soft tissue, right? So it, it's the struts and cables. So it's the, the, the tension compression system inside the body and this being a very simple model to help us see that when we do something on one area it affects the whole system so as i go over and i and i twist one part of this the whole other side is is affected so we often don't think of that in our traditional view of the body but everything is connected and i show this little fashion man often because we want to look at the whole body even if we're talking about one little area of the body that's not working right or hurts. So its shape depends on the tension within the supporting structure. So we got the connective tissue, 
and the bones, the fascia, they change shape unevenly, then imbalances result. And so balancing these tensions throughout the body's connective tissue promotes good function and health. So you see my little guy over here, we're gonna show a few more pictures of this. The right side is all compressed. The pelvis is coming up on one side. You can see how that's gonna affect the leg length and everything that we do, every step that, that we take. So a little bit more about this liquid crystalline matrix. It's known as a crystalline fiber optic system. So what's the fluid that is going inside these little fibers that, that you saw, it's a liquid crystal and it's thought of as the actual fiber optic communication system between every cell or in every cell in the body is pretty amazing. So the brain and every nerve are in this, again, every single cell in the body. It's just, it's kind of huge to think about. Primary communication system, think of it as much faster than just the brain and the nerves. It's our innate intelligence or our consciousness flowing through our body. So as we feel, you know, happy and energized and like our whole body is light hearted, it's going through our fascia. So it's instantly capable of spreading far more information than the brain. So I'm going to go past here. So we're seeing the, the connection, you know, as we think of the biotensegrity here, um, it's other areas in nature. We see this too. Um, we use an orange as an example, often um, a sweater and that whole network and how you can pull on one area. It's affecting the whole thing. A uh, tent, like the old fashioned tent. And you got the struts and the cables. Again, the tensegrity model here in the tent. What's going to happen if one of those those cables is comes out of the ground. Well, the whole thing changes, right? So that's what um, that continuous connection shows. It helps us to kind of see it in, in something that's everyday life, you know? So the fascia is also known as the foundation of life. Uh, it's continuous three-dimensional web, again, from head to toe. So the more we can just start thinking of it that way, we will get cues if we're paying attention to how we can treat those areas that are not comfortable, okay? So I uh, wanted to highlight Dr. Carol Davis here. She's just an, an amazing woman who's, who's a physical therapist and she has been um, also um, previously to doing a lot in physical therapy. Um, she actually ended up writing my favorite book in PT school. It was about the patient practitioner interaction. So she um, really has a, a good view and understanding of, you know, our systems as humans and how we can help each other, especially in the, in the physical therapy realm and in other really medical realms um, when we're, we're helping and dealing with patients. So um, she was taught for many years um, down in Miami, Florida and is now in Maine. Um, and she gave me permission to use these slides. So I just wanted to, to say one of the things that she talks about is the traditional view of the body, which is what we were all taught. You know, that's what we had back then. And what we know now is that a more accurate view of our mind body system is this picture here on the right. And that is showing the energetic fields that extend from the body the energy centers, which are also known in some circles as chakras, but this is well known now. We can take pictures, we can actually see this, we can measure frequency coming off of the body. And it's this fascial system that is part of that. It's flowing through those microtubules. So very, very fascinating stuff. Again, this is what we were taught, very simplistic model. What do we see here mostly? A bunch of muscles, you know? And really, we are more like this. We are very energetic. And it's it's those muscle fibers within the fascia and then that biotensegrity stored energy. Remember way back at the beginning of the thing, I talked about the, um, the architects and how they, they talked about the invisible stored energy in that tensegrity structure. That's what we are. And that's what we're working with with every movement. We also have emotions stored within this system. This is a picture of a video I did with um, Valerie McGraw, who's John Barnes' main physical therapist. She's been working with him for 34 or five years now. Um, 
And we did a video talking about emotions in the body and how fascia carries emotions in the tissues. It retains memories of injury and trauma and tissue memory or cellular memory, also other terms you may have heard. And we give examples um, about that in this, in this video. So what I wanna play here, this is a, a video I used to, to play in the treatment room for patients often, I'm beginning to feel like I should start showing it again. But I show this every time I, I do this uh, slide presentation. This is Gil Headley. He's a anatomist who is fascia informed. And I just love his, his way of talking about fascia. And he, he calls it fuzz in the body. But of course, it doesn't melt away. So it, it kind of is a little bit, um, if, if you're not sure where, what he's getting at with, with this, I just want to clarify when you know our fascia doesn't disappear but when it gets stuck and clogged up that's what he's referring to as as the fuzz so hopefully the sound goes well with this so here we go you guys can hear that yeah which has a little bit of sounds like water good yeah so Here's the thing about the fuzz. Let me try and do it again. Okay. So we've seen the fuzz. You can see it now. I'll put it in over my voice. The fuzz yields to my fingertip. Sometimes I come across a stronger, thicker strand. It doesn't yield to my fingertip. That represents older fuzz sometimes, or maybe it represents the nerve. But each night when you go to sleep, the interfaces between your muscles grow fuzz potentially. And in the morning, when you wake up and you stretch, the fuzz melts. We melt the fuzz. That stiff feeling you have is the solidifying of your tissues. The sliding surfaces aren't sliding anymore. There's fuzz growing in between them. You need to stretch. Every cat in the world gets up in the morning and it stretches its body and it melts the fuzz in the same way that the fuzz melted when I passed my finger through it. When you're moving, it's as if you're passing your finger through the fuzz, just like I did on the cadaver form here. So you have to stretch and move and use your body in order to melt that fuzz that's building up between the sliding surfaces of your musculature. The sliding surface, those shiny white surfaces with the rectus femoris sliding against the vastus intermedialis. So these uh, sliding surfaces are all over your body. The fuzz is all over your body, and as you move, you melt the fuzz. Now, what happens if you get an injury? Ah, my shoulder. My shoulder is stiff now. I'm holding my shoulder. I go to bed. I wake up in the morning. I don't stretch my shoulder. I'm afraid it hurts. So I walk around like this. Last night's fuzz doesn't get melted. I go to bed. I sleep some more. Now I have two nights' fuzz built up. Now, two nights' fuzz is more fuzz than one night's fuzz. What if I have a week's fuzz or a month's fuzz? Now those fuzz fibers start lining up and intertwining and intertwangling, and all of a sudden you have thicker fibers form. You start to have an inhibition of the potential for movement there. It's no longer simply a matter of going, oh, ah, stretch. Now you need some work. Now you might need to do a more systematic exploration of that place to restore the original movement that you lost. And usually this is the case. We have a temporary injury then we restore our movement. But sometimes we call this aging, the buildup of fuzz amongst the sliding surfaces of our bodies so that our motion becomes limited, the limit cycles become introduced into our normal full range of motion. And we start to walk around like this. We're all fuzzed over. Our body is literally solidifying, reducing our range of motion in, in individual areas of our body, you know, for our entire body in general. So, I believe that one of the great benefits of body work, whether it be massage or structural therapies or uh, physical therapy or any kind of hands-on therapy, uh, these types of therapies introduce movement manually to tissues that have become fuzzed over through lack of movement, whether the lack of movement is because of an injury and a person is protecting that injury or because of uh, personality expression. Oh, was many years when I just walked around like this. So I was very still and monk-like. So, and then I became a little more dynamic in my personality when I realized what I was doing to myself and the kind of life that I wanted. So you can grow fuzz by choice or by accident or whatever. And yet here, now you've heard the fuzz speech, you know that 
you can take responsibility for melting the fuzz. And if there's too much fuzz in your body and it's frozen up, you might want to seek help in order to introduce movement so that the new cycle is a little more movement and a little more movement and a little more movement instead of a little less movement, a little less movement, a little less movement. Fuzz represents time. The easier it is for me to pass my finger through the fuzz, the less amount of time it's been there. If I got to whip out my scalpel to dig my way through one otherwise sliding surface and another, you know that that's been building up for a long time. So you can actually see time in fuzz. That's the fuzz speech. We love the fuzz speech. So I love that. I, I I could probably say it by heart. <laughs> I've listened to it so many times. But yes, we all become fuzzed over, you know, and sometimes it's years of being fuzzed over. So movement is really important. So the question then is why is fascia overlooked? The bottom line is it's invisible, it's in an X-ray, MRI, or CT. So this solidification we see in this in this model here, where like looks like the spider webbing is all stuck. What the x-ray or, or most imaging is going to show is the skeletal system. So you can see that the skeleton is curved there. So you can see, okay, that might even be called a scoliosis, but why? It's not seeing the restricted areas that are, that are pulling it there, okay? So again, remembering the anatomy lab example that I gave. Here's another really great, just a little bit shorter. Now we looked at the, the fuzz or the fascia in a, in a cadaver dead tissue completely different in living tissue. We have we have life there, the fluid is there. Um, so take a look at this. What we see is a tendon sliding underneath the fascial sleeve. It looks like it's ran up, it shares a blood supply and without restriction it slides easily. Then what we're seeing is the fascia pulled up from the tendon, magnified 25 times, now we can see the little individual fibers binding together to form restriction, big tree trunks rather than each individual fiber. And it will only come apart with sustained traction. As you see in this example, this one little string comes apart from the rest. The whole system is very fluid filled and quite well hydrated in its healthy state but you can see how it binds together and creates restriction. In the center of the screen, you'll see fascial release, and then off to the left, another piece comes up, and in the background, the whole fascial plane starts to let go. It's like a tectonic plate. Then there's elongation of one of the fibers. This is an example of how the vascular system is buried in the fat and fascia, and when the fascia clamps in, in the dear God, we're going to die response, the purpose is to inhibit and squeeze these blood vessels so that if you get cut, you don't bleed too much. It squeezes your nerves so that if you get hurt, you don't feel it right away. You can see how beautiful these little fibers are when they're individualized and how they're fluid filled. See the water flowing up the tubule? These are fiber optics that conduct consciousness throughout your body, sharing information about proprioception. It's a beautiful thing. So it looks a little bit different in living tissue. And just remembering that there, that everything is connected. So in this book and in the videos, which you can even look for these on, on YouTube called Stro Strolling Under the Skin, you get to see more of the living fascia, but there are no breaks in continuity of living matter. There are no sheets of tissue or layers or sub layers arising from nowhere. So it's not just like layers like this or covering around the muscles. It's all connected through the cells. So that enables us then to realize that because everything is connected, we could have a symptom in one area, but the cause could be somewhere else. And this is what John has been teaching um, for you know, over 50 years, he's been doing courses. But this is what we, we are, as myofascial therapists, we are looking for. Of course, paying attention to the system, symptom, but where else could it possibly be coming from? So find the symptom, look elsewhere for the cause. Because normally fascia is 
is relaxed. When it, when it becomes tight or restricted in a source of tension, it starts to pull on the skeletal system like this, right? So everybody looks different. Dysfunction though in one area can cause dysfunction in another area because it's all working together as a whole. So I, I put a couple of these on here so you can see the, the two on the right side, I just flip flopped like the main fashion man that, that we always use. And so it's, it's uncanny how many times I see people with that right side crunched together like that, but sometimes it's the left side or sometimes it's something completely different. And if you look at the examples on, on the left side, you know, I just kind of colored, maybe someone feels tight all the way up the left side of their body, or maybe Maybe it's the right side of the body or maybe you know the upper body is somewhere it just there's a multitude of different probably countless different ways that people can have fascial restriction and john barnes says you know how many people there are in the world you know eight billion people there are eight billion different fascial patterns because we all have a different story and different things that have happened to us so you know, think to yourself as we're thinking about what happens to fascia, where do you feel your restrictions or tightness? And what does your fascia man look like? And I actually have thought of doing this and I'm, I'm getting closer to it. It's one of the things I love to do is just, you know, give my patients a picture of a skeleton like this and say, you know, where would you color your tightness? And some we kind of do that with our evaluation form. We have people kind of show where their, their pain is. But to me, that's different. You can have tightness and pulling, but it's not pain, right? And a lot of times we we just shut that out. We, we get really good at ignoring our body talking to us. And those those marks on the fashion man, like if, if we knew that that was there, we would then be able to treat that or change that restriction so that we don't get pain. So this is what we do, you know. As therapists, we look at the body and standing, and and it's it's our history that creates these restrictions. You know, falls, accidents, injuries from all kinds of things, surgery, overuse, posture, stress, overtraining, and exercise. Um, feeling your alignment and looking for these asymmetries is key as we improve our awareness so that we can help ourselves, okay? So another thing that happens to fascia, if we look here, this is a shoulder blade, okay? And at this little, the, the red here on the left, imagine that's a bunch of restricted fascia. Well, when we look on the right side here, see how this is supposed to move? When we lift our arm, our shoulder blade is supposed to move like that. If it's restricted, like the picture on the left, it's not going to move well. And our we're not going to have the motion that we want. But our attention is on the shoulder joint. And maybe the pain is up here, but the problem is in that shoulder blade. Okay, so hopefully you're, you're seeing how this starts to come together. Now, here's this joint space again. So picture those fascia man and, and how it's all compressed together, right? What do you suppose is going to happen to this joint space if there's a bunch of restricted fascia throughout the whole, let's say, left side of this pelvis over here. It's gonna to compress together, right? And it's not gonna be able to move well. So what happens to fascia? I like to think of over here on the left, it's a total body straight jacket. It's a little bit fuzzy. I found it online, so it wasn't, wasn't a great picture, but I, thought it, I know a lot of people who probably feel like this, like their whole body is stuck at one time. I felt like this. And so what we really should be is like the picture on the right, where we're movable and there's free flowing and you're not stuck, you know? We should be able to have freedom of movement and fluidity as opposed to this solidification or congealing of that fluid we saw in the living fascia videos. Love that, that view. So keep in mind, we also can't strengthen a muscle fiber that's in a straight jacket. So if, if our fascia man has, you know, red all up and down one side and we're trying to, in physical therapy, strengthen our, our body, we can't strengthen very well if we're in a bunch of restricted tissue. So that's a problem. We want to be more like jello, less like concrete, right? So that solidification is what we, we want to get rid of. That can develop also from posture, right? So we look at this posture in, in the middle of the of the picture here the, with the red spots on it. When there's, you know, a posture of rounded shoulders, like in these two pictures of these, these people, this area can get so tight that it's going to not allow those joints to move properly. It's like, like Gil was saying, there's, it's all fuzzed over. 
and the structure then can't move right. So we have to, you know, not just mind the posture. Yeah, we get that way, but then it gets so tight that we can't fix it. So even when we try to fix our posture in these lower pictures, we might not be able to because we're too stuck. So again, there's fascia playing a major role in every movement we make and every injury we've ever, we've ever had. So what can we do about it? Okay. We come to myofascial treatment and self-treatment. John Barnes is who uh, my mentor is. I also have taken other types of courses uh, on, on the body, including uh, craniosacral therapies and, and strain, counter strain, and different things. And, and in my experience, this technique, his technique has been the most powerful and gentle. So it's not painful. We don't force the tissue. We wait for the change to happen. So just real quickly, the MFR principles uh, as taught by John Barnes is that we take up the slack and we hold up the barrier. The same thing goes for self-treatment. So, so many times we try to force through and our self-treatment becomes like stretching. It's definitely not stretching. A lot of times stretching is just like we're, we're trying to force that position. We don't force, we stay at the barrier and we kind of feel beyond and our hand connects deep into the patient, feeling this three-dimensional structure of the biotensegrity. And we wait for at least five minutes more if possible because the collagen fibers, which are the ones that are really holding us tight, they take a long time to adapt because our body adapts to whatever we do and whatever we don't do, right? So we are providing a situation where the body can get used to that and those collagenous fibers begin to change. And the more patient and centered we can be as therapists and let go of the outcome, allowing the body to do what it needs to do, the better results that, that we get. So we're facilitating this subtle energy flow. Remember that picture of the, the flowing person? I like to think of it that way. Our, we're, we're trying to create that instead of a straight jacket, right? So our engagement of the tissue is important. We're not, and think of that push-pull of the biotensegrity, we're engaging the tissue, but we're not forcing it. When the body starts to push back, that's where we stay. And we wait for that gelatinous part to melt in a three-dimensional direction. Kind of think of that as an art, <laughs> an art form of myofascial release. And even with self-care, because we can learn how to do that as, as well. There's a thing called myofascial un unwinding. I use a cat because animals are so good at this. They're feeling into their body and allowing their bodies to move. Um, but think of this as a strong body awareness that allows you to let go, feel and sense what your body needs and letting the body move into positions of release. And this could look like anything. I mean, it's different. It can be different every time when it happens. It's different between, you know, among people. And some people don't experience this very often. Um, but you can think of, of feeling what you need and allowing, like, not trying to stay in one particular position, but just letting it happen. And I'll use an example of when I was, in, this first happened to me, I didn't really know what it was. I was doing legs up the wall and I was really relaxed and feeling this gentle elongation in my body. And my head just started to move real soft. And I thought to myself, all of a sudden I realized, hey, my head's moving. I'm not doing that. What is that? <laughs> and that was an unwinding of this stuck tissue, um, which actually felt really good. So Again, we look at the patient standing, we ask what, you know, they're dealing with pain, problems, accidents, injuries. Um, we observe for alignment, we feel the tissue and we look for what is hot, hard or tender or restricted so that we can treat it. So that gives you a little overview. A lot of you here are probably already gotten treatment. So you kind of know what that is like, but um, the more you get treated over time, you begin to feel this more in your body, which is really important to feel and to be present. We do also co-treats. This is Brooke and Danny here at the studio um, co-treating me last year after um, some of the problems I had in next, which I'm going to bring up here in just a moment. And this is at Essential Therapies in Toledo. So the other thing that John talks about in, and I do as well, is just the importance of daily self-treatment. And this starts with your awareness. You know, it can even be just a, a five minutes a day, um, feeling an air of your body that might need some, some attention. And it empowers you as a patient to continue your treatment between sessions to 
you know, really learn what you're feeling in your body and to become part of the solution, basically. We want to keep the pelvis balanced, for example. We see that fashion man and the pelvis is all twisted and torqued. There are many things that you can learn with self-treatment to keep the pelvis balanced and open up these spaces of restriction in the joints. Here's an example of um, this picture on the left. I remember taking this or having my kids take a picture of this. I'm like, I, that day I needed to do that technique before I left the house. And you'll see this, I'm using these arrows. I needed to elongate that right side. So just like the fascia man who was crunched together on the right, that's what I'm doing. I'm really opening up this, this right side. I'm reaching with my right arm and with my right heel while I've got the strap on the leg and just really kind of gently opening different than stretching. I think of it as elongation. And over here on the right, you'll see these arrows. Again, the body responds to elongation and compression going back to that biotensegrity. So I'm lengthening here. That's what I do after a run to really open up my hips and keep that space in my hips. So this is a personal case study of mine. Sorry for the gory pictures. Um, we're coming up on one year here with this, but I was in a bike accident and my face smashed the ground. I kind of went out for a moment and um, I ended up in a helicopter. I'm going to St. V's um, because I had some significant trauma. So I'll show you here what happened um, with this little skeleton. My, my face crashed. So the right side, the right bone there where my right teeth are crashed so that when I came to on the ground there, I could feel with my tongue that my right front tooth was directly behind my left front tooth. So my bones smashed inside that strongly. And I was able to thankfully really stay calm and centered and began treating myself right away. The thing that happened was I, I went to open my mouth and I couldn't open my jaw because it was all smashed, right? Well, then I knew I had to work out here. I worked enough to get my mouth open and get my fingers in my mouth so that I could apply the proper pressures and techniques to gently allow Again, meeting that barrier, the change in my cranial bones so that that would go back. And I was in the outlying emergency facility. When that happened, it actually popped. And then shortly after that, I ended up having a seizure. And that's why I ended up in the in the helicopter to St. V's. But, but the good thing about that whole situation is that it enabled me. They kept me overnight. So I was able to work on myself right here in the hospital bed. Con consistently as much as I possibly could. I was so grateful that my shoulder was okay, even though I crashed it pretty hard. I was able to use my hands and work on myself continuously. So I bring this up because the power of self-treatment is so huge. And I mean, I believed in that before this happened, but after this happened, I, I mean, I'm still think that I'm, I'm still processing it almost a year later. Here, here we are, but it took weeks and weeks of me consistently working on my body more than I normally do, but to get it back to, to functioning fine. You know, I have some, um, my, my tooth, nothing cracked. I, I mean, it's not like perfect. Sometimes I can kind of feel it, but I'm okay. So according to the dentist now, self-treatment wasn't the only thing I did. I went to the John Barnes clinic in Pennsylvania. I had three days of intensive treatment because especially when you have a trauma like that, that tissue memory is stuck there. I needed some consistent work to, to get myself back to more of a normal state. So I had, um, there's Valerie working on me there and I had a number of therapists working on me there. But I find this really interesting. If you can look at this picture on the left on June 7th, look at my eye, look at my left eye and how it kind of is compressed a little bit. You can see how much I'm opening my mouth. My chin is a little bit off. And when you look at the picture next to it, two days later, after I think I had 12 hours of treatment or so, um, so seventh, eighth, and ninth, so really three days, the seventh, that was the beginning of the seventh, this is at the end of the ninth. The difference in my face is definitely profound. I could open my mouth better. There was no pain with that. Um, on day one, when I got there, I was having a lot of pain throughout my body in many different places. So look at this, the, look at my belly button on the left and how it's shifted off the center line there compared to the right and how the shoulder height, even in my head where, where it is. And then I'll hit both of these at the same time, just for sake of time. 
On the left there, you can kind of see my gait is a little bit choppy. And then on the right, after the three days, I'm I, in fact, on the left, I'm hurting. You can just see how my arms are swinging funny. I just, uh, I'm rolling my eyes because I'm hurting there. Um, at the end, I did not have anywhere near the same kind of pain. So here we are, the traditional models again. What's missing? The fascia, right? There's no examples of fascia here. But I was working primarily up here. My whole body had its issues. You can see in those pictures. But the fascia doesn't stop. You know, here was my pain, for example, in, in my mouth and my head that was all off. It's the whole body, once again. So self-treatment, just really want to impress upon everybody that you can make a huge difference. But it's consistency in knowing what to do, right? Take at least five minutes to begin a myofascial release to change the collagen. So we want to gradually work up to holding gentle positions at least five minutes. It's not stretching, it's self-treatment. It's it's different, okay? I have a video where I talk about the calm technique and how to get the most out of your self-treatment that you can get on YouTube. Um, it's about connecting with your body, feeling what's going on, getting away from that, shutting it off. Like for so much, we have to get through our day, right? So we don't think about the pain or discomfort or tightness we're feeling. We just, we just keep going. And we need to learn to feel instead so we can make the most out of that. So that will help. The calm technique involves the body and emotional awareness as well, just being present with all of the things. Some examples of um, self-treatment, the silly picture there with me and my cat, um, that was many years ago, she's no longer with us, but every time I'd get down to here, she would, she would be there. You can see I'm using the strap to give myself a, a nice neck release there multiple things that we can do. Here's an example of a self-treatment training class that we hold occasionally at the studio doing um, some legs up the wall and hip strap stretch series. And again, it's the most important thing is to make it part of your daily life. Consistency, consistency, consistency. It's just huge. I use the example of brushing teeth all the time. It's not like we necessarily enjoy the act of brushing our teeth, right? But we like how our mouth feels afterwards and we want to prevent the bad things that happen if we don't do it. So I put the little slant board there because for a long time, I would use the slant board while I was brushing my teeth. I'm not doing that right now because I don't really feel like I need it. And I've got really good ankle motion, but something like that, you can double it up with other activities, you know, works, works really well. So even if you're only five to 10 minutes every day, but then doing longer period, periods one or two times a week, maybe 30, 60 minutes and learning what it is that you need to, to help yourself. We do have a private Facebook group where I'm, I occasionally post things in there, um, time, time allowing where I give different ideas and, and help with suggestions of how do you learn to connect to yourself and how do you treat? So, um, and then pretty extensive information on YouTube as well. Um, melt options is this soft foam rollers and the, the melt balls, which by the way, we're going to be doing some, a friend of mine um, who actually lives in Colorado is going to be doing some melt classes. For those of you who have tried some melt in the past, we will be having them virtual ones you can do at home, which I think is great, um, makes it easier. Um, we use my little soft ball there, the four inch ball, where we do lots of self-treatment with, with the ball where you can engage the hip strap series. Again, it's different. That's not just stretching, it's treating. And of course, my favorite favorite is legs up the wall. And I'm excited to announce as well that I finally have out there in a mastermind course format, um, the legs up the wall course. It's 12 guided sessions. And through this month, I've got it 30% off. It's, it's really a great value for all of the, the private or the, the one-on-one, -on -one, you can think of it that way. It's the courses that I did in the past where you could just let this play while you're doing legs up the wall and I'm guiding you into various positions. It's really, really helpful. And then I wanna share this picture with you because this, this was quite profound for me. Um, when I used to live in DC many years ago, uh, about 20 years ago now, I was doing yoga once a week or twice, once or twice a week at one of the studios there. And I asked the instructor who was internationally known if he had a good yoga story person that I could interview. And this is Barbara. She started practicing yoga when she was, is that say 69? I've got the picture over it there. 69 years old. She, she had such horrible knee arthritis. They wanted her to have both of her knees replaced. 
And she just didn't want to do it. She was using the um, wheelchair, you know, those chairs when you go to the grocery store, she couldn't even get through the grocery store. And she sought out this yoga studio who was started with very gentle, gentle yoga. And she got through her knee pain. And this is what she was doing when I interviewed her. And she was 79 years old. So in her 60s, she she was really laid up. She thought she was going to have bilateral only replacement. And look at this woman. Uh, she was just my it was it was incredible to me. She changed her fascial system and she did it with consistency. That's what she told me. She just never gave up. And she was very gentle. She never forced her tissue. And she was doing everything she wanted to do at 79. So cool stuff. And then just a couple more quick things. Things I want to mention, just because it's, I think this is so important. Women's health is so important. For, for about three years, I only did women's health. And I saw a lot of very um, challenging pelvic issues for women um, and fascial restriction, adhesion problems, women who'd had endometriosis, pelvic pain, hip pain, back pain, all kinds of different things. And when we look at the women in female anatomy, there can be adhesions all throughout the abdominal area. And it affects the hips and the back, which then ends up affecting the rest of the body, know, knowing about biotensegrity, right? Because if your pelvis and your hips are all off, it can throw off your knees and give you knee pain. And you don't even realize it's coming from the pelvic area. And so in this picture here, see that C-section scar? There's two C-sections there. And using the small ball to treat that area is highly effective. So there's a lot of things that we can do for pelvic health. So I throw this out there because I feel like it's been ignored in a lot of ways. Um, and, but important to think about. So if you know anyone or you yourself think that, wow, maybe that's part of my problem, you know, we, we can definitely address that. So there's essential therapies in Toledo and there you go. Here's essential therapies West, which is where I'm at right now, a little house out in the country, not far from me. We've, I've had people come here and do intensives where they're doing several hours over a few days um, and we can accommodate people here. So um, as you want to learn more or experience myofascial release and self-treatment coaching, you know where to find me. And remember you guys, you are creating tomorrow's body today, regardless of where your body has been. If you haven't been paying attention to the fascial system or maybe progressed your self-treatment enough or been consistent enough about it, it can change because your tomorrow's body can look completely different. I just turned, my birthday is yesterday, I just turned 58. My body is in way better condition than it was when I was 28, okay? So you you just, you you have the world ahead of you to be able to change to change things and make it, make it better. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and invite you all to unmute or ask questions as, as you're here. Um, it did go much longer than I thought, but it's, we're still under an hour, <laughs> but I think it's all important information. So does anybody have anything either to share from your own experience, especially um, for anybody that's on here or listens to this in the future that might benefit from it, either what you've gone through or if you have questions about anything that I shared? And you can just unmute your yourself or if you need help with that I can ask you to unmute nobody Cindy yeah <laughs> sorry I'm having problems with my camera but um no, I wanted to say thank you for your recommendation for finding a local MFR therapist. Wish it was you, but um, I'm, as you know, uh, thought I would put it out there in case anybody's thinking about it, having a lot of success with a very complex problem. And yeah. it's not fully resolved, but it is unwinding. Great. Thank you, Amy. So, yeah, it works. We can't see you, but... <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to figure it out. Yeah. I, I, if you tap the screen, you might see the little flip camera button there. It's there tricky. It I, I get caught up with it too. So, okay. um, I, yes, there you go. Okay. I'm plugged. I'm plugged in. My battery's dying. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. So I mentioned melt. So can I give you a plug? 
but go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is Amy Brown. She's a melt instructor. We met in Utah a couple of years ago at a um, or a year and a half ago at a at a melt conference, and she's going to be um, doing teaching some melt for us on online. So I'm super excited about that. But um, Me too. yeah. Hey, thank you for sharing that. It's cool. You know, you had this melt background and the fascia awareness and now just taking it further and, and changing your self-treatment a little bit. It's great. And you're seeing improvement. Yes. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? I have a question. For yeah. Our um, I've been to two of the sessions there at your Toledo location and I hadn't gone back for my third one because my pain's been so much worse mm -hmm. in my shoulder and my neck and then I started getting headaches and they haven't been able I haven't been able to get rid of them is that is that normal for that stuff to happen to get so worse? what you're yeah what so what you're experiencing Sue yeah I'm so sorry that, that you're experiencing it. it 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 can happen where we can get worse before we get better Mm -hmm. um, the, the hard part about that is in fact, Amy, who just spoke, she was, could probably share some of that too. And, and I've had the same situation in, in myself where early on when I was having a lot of migraine headaches and other issues, it, it sometimes I would get worse for a while before I got better. We call that the healing chaos. You could say, um, mm -hmm. therapeutic pain, um, the key, I think, is to finding the right self-treatment stuff to help you. Um, getting maybe shorter sessions, more frequent, because the body is so tied up that it wants to, you know, even as we start to soften this tissue and create openness and space, the it, it wants to go back because that subconscious holding pattern is so strong, you know? Well, and, you know, clearly the, the work while you're having it feels gentle, gentle, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we certainly wouldn't want to, again, we don't force the tissue, but someone like yourself might be in need of more consecutive. And I know this is hard because you're hurting, so you don't want to come back. It's like, it's trying to understand. And, and that's how I felt when I was first learning this too, but taking the courses, I think what helped me here, I was a student in the course, right? With John himself teaching and explaining that this is what can happen. But I believed, I felt it in my body. It was very sensitive to this work. And I knew it was what I needed because I, even though sometimes I felt worse later, I could feel that tightness was what needed to go away. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you feel the tightness that's there and it's creating this compression. Well, how else are you going to get rid of it, right? You can't, you can't force yourself. You can't force it because it hurts even more, right? Um, it's, it's that compression of, of everything and it's hard. And all I can say is it's this consistency. I still, I, I feel like you and I should, maybe even if we're talking, you know, even over the phone, to kind of go through some specific self-treatment things for you, kind of really find out how often you're doing it. What could I have you do? Even this legs up the wall course that I do is mm -hmm. really good because it's really gentle and you don't have to force into any position, you know, but it's the consistency. Someone like yourself might need to do some self-treatment two, maybe even three times a day, but even gentle, maybe shorter periods, you know, to find, to find the right thing. I've been a lot less active because this pain's so bad in my yeah. head. Right, uh, right. My head right. feels like it's like a bowling ball, you know, that it's too much right. weight. Yeah. And I, I can appreciate that with having had migraine headaches. One of the things that John said in the fascial cranium course, I remember it, I, I just liked the way that he said that. And it was uh, his latest um, course, I spent several years ago now, maybe seven or eight years. And he said, you know, think about it all day long. So you think of that fascia man. And if you have tightness in your body, it's pulling down with gravity all day long. What's at the top? What's being pulled on the most? Your head and neck. You know, there's this, this force, this compression. And then that tightness is within the head and the skull, with all of these structures there. Like I was working on myself, you know, I mean, maybe what, what, what I need to do is teach you some 
some hands-on techniques for your head that you're doing several times a day. Cause I don't think we've talked about that. I think I'm grinding yeah. my, I think I've been grinding my teeth a lot too at night. Yes, I wear, absolutely. I wear a mouth guard, but I think I'm just grinding so hard. The little I do sleep. Yeah. I think that would be a good one. So I, have you seen my video on the headaches, the, the headache self-treatment? I I think I have. I'd have to go back to remember. So maybe we just need, yeah, we can start with some something that's real specific to the head that might help you. So I'll message you later and get get you a couple of things. Yeah, Thanks. I mean Thank it's you. it's hard, you know, just just being. Um, if there's anybody out there who's listening who could who could uh, maybe give give a little <laughs> pointer to Sue here, um, you know, working through the difficult times and waiting for you know as as things start to start to change, it will happen. I mean, yeah. it just we we need to be patient and consistent. What we know yeah. isn't going to help. I mean, drugs just treat the system. Yeah, system, I don't. You know, I won't. Do and when drugs. If, if we have surgery. Surgery just creates more scar tissue, which is the yeah. challenge, you know? Yeah. Okay. Let me put it on gallery here. Is there anybody else that would like to add anything? Cindy? Yes. Nope. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope. Move on. I'll come back. No, no I just was saying hello to someone. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, no, I was just going to, I don't know what any of her details um, from Sue, but I was, um, really struck with one of the things that the therapist that I'm working with said um, some of the my minus three decades three 34 years and 34 years into the same pain pattern and as it unwinds um, we are taking away faulty stabilization systems and when we take away those faulty stabilizations it leaves me with no stabilization because the way that I was supposed to be stabilizing is basically atrophied. <laughs> it's just gone away. And so, you know, maybe there's something in that process where if you're taking something away and then you haven't built up what needs to be there, that can lead to pain. And I, I'm, I'm hurting now from overdoing it today, um, you know, after having had therapy yesterday. And I know I'm going back tomorrow and I can sort of calm it down tomorrow. But um, if there's, if you're in that process where you're taking something away, well, what do you have left? And then you start doing something, you know, like I'm trying to get to be more active. It, it's not time for me to be that much more active yet. Um, because I have to go back and restabilize the correct pattern and then work on the strength beyond that. But I'm not even to that point where strength is a consideration. It's all about just trying to stabilize correctly. So if there's anything in there that applies and helps you, um, you know, maybe you can run with it. Yeah. And I think, and Amy, would you share how often you got treatment over the last month and like that, which is really the beginning of your journey? Yeah. It's um, I'm just going twice, twice a month. It's a, in an hour to an hour and a half. It's, you know, about an hour, but if you're in the middle of an Twice unwinding she, or twice she a month you said twice a month. Oh, sorry sorry twice twice a week <laughs> for a month okay. and then <laughs> yeah. um and yeah. I just signed up for another twice a week um for two weeks and then sometime at the maybe you know beginning of next week we'll decide whether I should start going once a week or continue twice a week but I've got some momentum and it's definitely worth keeping up with it um, and not letting it slide, but I did have a really big setback um, a couple weeks ago, and it was because we did break down some of that old stabilization that wasn't supposed to, it was the wrong system, and then I had to re, you know, I'm having to rebuild it, but it, it set me back into, I've, I've had a spinal fusion, and it mm -hmm. set me back into pain that I haven't had since I haven't had pain, and that was hard because I, I got rid of the pain. And I, I just haven't had that again. And it came back and it was, it was significant and it, it was a showstopper for me. Um, but I knew that I had another session coming up. And if I hadn't had one, she said, oh, you know, let me know. I can get you in quickly uh, for something like that. But yeah, so twice a week, I do either Monday, Wednesday or Tuesday, Thursday or something like that mm -hmm. for a month. Right. And then at, at least another two weeks and maybe another two after that. Yeah. 
So with the idea being the consistency is helping and then to, to be able to back that down as you get your stabilization back, as the restrictions fade. And then, you know, re remember the whole straight jacket, the muscle and the straight jacket, we can't strengthen that muscle until, until that muscle fiber can actually function properly. So you're in the middle of that process. Yeah. Thank you for yep. sharing that. Yep. Hopefully that helps Sue. Yeah, so, you. yeah, great. All right. We are almost 10 after nine. Does anybody have anything else to share or ask? I feel like I went through that super fast, but um, got through a lot of things. Um, what I would like to do next month is spend some more specific time, um, similar, maybe even with, with a presentation format like this on self-treatment, you know, um, what, how, how do you figure this out? You know, it's something that took me, I'm still, I'm still doing it. I mean, it's, it's a process. It's an ongoing thing um, because our body is always changing, but I, I definitely made some mistakes early on um, and didn't do things enough or maybe did things too much and, and have learned a lot from that. And, you know, we'll definitely share some of, some of those things. Um, so, all right. If there's nothing else to, to address, Thank you guys so much for, for coming. I would love, you guys all have my, I have a way to reach me. I would, I, I would love to get some feedback if you thought this was helpful or, or what else you might like to have on our, on our next, um, our next fascia forum and which will be the first Thursday of June. So um, at this time, and I'll have this recording and you can share with others or, um, you know, watch it later and that sort of thing. So thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Cindy.